your mom looked at me. She's a, she's a nurse too. And she goes, you know, you're right, Ashley. It does shrink your balls. And she goes, Cooper, it will shrink your balls. You guys have made it through the two weeks, two weeks of talking oh, about it's gone sex. Too fast. Some of these have been really awkward just because we have to have a sense of humor. Beautifully awkward. Beautifully awkward. I hope, I hope you all have enjoyed this. I hope that you've had really meaningful conversations with your spouse and also a lot of laughs. I mean, I said scrote on the last episode. That was You're fun. a boy mom. You say scrote I, a lot. Well, I was having a conversation. I mean, this is just give you a glimpse. Scrote. This is how honest we it. are. Like, I have not said wash your scrote. Did I say that once? Well, maybe I just imagine it. But it's good <laughs> advice. Maybe I say that to the boy. Um, I, I just always say like wash really good everywhere. Okay. But no, yesterday we were talking. Um, this is with Dave's parents here because they're very honest too. And we were talking about steroids for some reason. And cause there was some movie they saw where this guy was all jacked and Cooper was like, he definitely took steroids. And I was like, I don't know. And then I, of course, being the, a mother, I was a dare, you know, dare to keep kids off drugs. Drug abuse resistant education. For I was an advocate in high school. In the 90s. I was a representative of dare. So yeah. I, I studied all this stuff and I had to go like teach younger kids about this. And I was like, do you know all of the bad side effects that steroids can have on a man? And I went through all of them and like, you can get all this acne on your back. You can be angry, but you can also, it'll shrink your balls. I mean, I literally said it just like that. Yeah. Well, and, it does. and your mom looked at me. She's a, she's a nurse too. And she goes, you know, you're right, Ashley, it does shrink your balls. And she goes, Cooper, it will shrink your balls. And, and if you ever do anything like that, your ball. And, and he's like, I'm not saying I would ever do any drugs or steroids. I'm just saying this guy did it. And I was like, well, it affects your man parts. Don't do anything. You know, they shouldn't be doing that. And anyway, so we always are very like, talk about all, you know, as a parent, you're just like, don't ever do that. Yeah, it's Cause he's a weightlifter. So I'm always like, don't even, you know, just don't go near that stuff. But, um, yeah. So we talk openly about whatever you know, balls. So yeah. yeah, that was, and that was like a, just a dinner conversation. No, our little boys weren't in the room, but they love we to talk, talk that balls. gut level honest about it because I think that would attract most men, you know, from doing things like that. They don't want that. So yeah. Protect so that's yourself. Maybe a topic for another day. Protect yourself, guys. But yeah. All right. That's a that we're we're ending out our 14 days. <laughs> Taiwan, of, you can take this out if you want to. I don't know. No, why leave, we're it, leave it in. It's all gold. <laughs> our producer Taiwan and his lovely Congrats fiance, to almost Taiwan wife. And Chloe yes. On their They've listened days to away all like, wedding. Yes. They, they are the cutest couple. They are. And we just cheer them on. God has great plans for them. They're going to be the most prepared, engaged couple ever because they've had to listen to all to of our episodes. But they're they're amazing. We love them. Yeah. And um, so last episode, we have one that is not as awkward, that is just important. And that is sex habits. Like, well, you what know is, what? I, I got to say one quick this? thing about Taiwan and Chloe on oh, this okay, episode because okay. we haven't done. But we're going to put a link in the show notes of where you guys can send a gift to Ooh, Taiwan and yes. Chloe because Taiwan produces this podcast. If you have we could benefited not do it from without it, Taiwan. they, they're an amazing young couple and you know what they could, they could use send them some, uh, little you know, wedding love, send them something nice. So, so we'll have a link for you to just the way your, your, your way of sending a little thank you. Say, you know, I love the podcast. Congrats on your wedding. Yeah. Here you go. Um, sorry that you carry. I love on. it. That's so sweet. Um, so we're talking about sex habits, like what kind of, what do we mean by this? We mean, you know, sex is something that we need to prioritize in marriage. We always talk about that. It's not everything. It's not the most important part of marriage, but it is an important part of oh, marriage. Yeah, very important. And so that means that we are, we ha are going to have habits, you know, and we want to have good sex habits when it comes to prioritizing our sex life in our marriage. And so I would say, number one, make sure you're having sex regularly. And what I mean by that is it needs to happen on a regular basis. Yeah. That's going to look different for every couple. There's not a magic number, No, but it has to be regular. Regular. I mean, yes. if, if a couple is not having sex, if it's very rare, mm -hmm. that is a warning sign, an emergency warning sign. That, that things, unless there's like some very specific, like medical reason why you haven't been able which to, sometimes there could which be. there can be, but under normal circumstances, if sex is just not happening, that's an emergency. Yeah. So it, it needs to be consistent. It needs to be um, mutually beneficial. We've talked about both male and female orgasm. If only one of you is orgasming, then that, that's, that's a problem. I mean, that needs to be something that is um, mutually 
mutually good and healthy. I think that talking about your sex life needs to be an important habit. And also regularly, like saying, are, you know, are you satisfied? Like, am I meeting your needs? You know, am I, um, I'm sorry, you know, this week I was sick or whatever, which I mean, obviously give people, you know, give each other grace on being sick or, um, whatever it is that you're going through, but just even being mindful to say, Hey, I want to meet your needs. Like I want, I want to make sure that we're prioritizing our sex life. Because you are the only legitimate source on earth of meeting your spouse's sexual needs. Now that doesn't mean that like they should manipulate that and be no. like, oh, you got to meet my need, like in no, a demanding way. No, that's not going to end well. That, yeah, yeah that, that becomes abusive. But I think both, if both of you have that servant hearted mindset, not only about sex, but in all parts of the marriage, how exactly. can I serve my spouse better? Then you're both going to be a lot happier. Exactly. And, and, and just really making sure that leading up to the bedroom, that you're being mindful and not just because you want to have sex, but that you're just being mindful to be caring and to connect in other ways, like all the non-sexual touch, all the conversations you have that day and, uh, and just the respect and love that you show to each other, making sure you're connecting. I think even just, you know, having a regular date night, like making sure that you're, especially those of you who are parents and have busy careers and things like that, like making sure that you set aside time to just really invest in your relationship. And also every day, like making sure you have time in the day where you talk, even if it's for like 15 minutes, like just really talking to each other, looking into each other's eyes and engaging with each other. I know for us, it's been going on a walk. We talk about that all the time, but you know, walks, regular walks are are something that we look forward to because it's time for us. Like it's time just to get out, get moving and talk. Yeah. And I think it, you know, that I, I know you'd be like, well, what does that have to do with our sex life? It has so much to do with it. It's oh, how sure. you connect. Four it's, plays an all day event. It's all day. And so, um, I think that, just really, you know, having honest conversations about what you like, what you don't like, not in the moment, like not when you're well, engaging. I mean, in the it. moment, it's good to say, that, yes, that feels good. Oh, absolutely. No, that doesn't feel good. Yes. But, but you know, like, but trying not the to, big like, conversation. Critiquing, you know? you know, their, their overall, like, yeah. 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 Have the bigger conversations in yeah. an, at another time. Exactly. I think, too, sexual habits, like, we have to make sure that we're not, um, masturbating and meeting our own sexual needs, you know, where that's our, our regular practice. Right. When that becomes a habit, your yeah. sex life's going to hurt for it. it I mean, will. it's going it to hurt will. because of it. I mean, because you're training yourself to be a selfish lover. Exactly. To- and it, and it's really, you will have less that you want to give to your spouse and experience with your spouse when you're having regular masturbation. And I'm not to say that there's not a time here and there where that may happen. I'm not, I'm not trying to shame someone, but I think that if it's a regular, for some people, it is a regular practice. I mean, especially we hear from a lot of men, but there's a lot of women, there's an increasing number of women that, um, this is just a regular practice for them. And I think that it takes away from, from the experience with your spouse because you're meeting that need yourself. And so we want to make sure that that's not something where we're just selfish and we're like, well, I just want to do it myself. It's easier because I can, you know, know what makes, what feels good to me, but it's like, well, no, communicate with your spouse and bring your spouse into that picture because sex is supposed to be about the two of you. Yeah. Because I, I think that's a sexual habit that culturally, um, uh, I feel like is just so widely accepted, like as normal and as Christians we're supposed to be set apart. And so, yeah, man, it's a good point. I think, I think, you know, to give a, a plug here, I think just listening consistently and discussing the naked marriage podcast <laughs> And I'm I'm serious. I I mean, we do this just to help you guys have more conversations about sex and about all parts of your marriage. And we're we're right there with you. I mean, this is a this is a place for us. You know, we're we're working through things, and then we'll come back and circle back and have follow up conversations. And oh, yeah. I do think that if you'll keep this, you've, you've kept this habit maybe for 14 days during you know the first part of the year if you're listening in real time. But even if it's just weekly, like, all right, well, once a week, we're going to we're going to tune in, listen to an episode and and really talk about it. What did we learn? What are we learning? And I think that's a, an important way to stay connected. And if it's not our podcast, find something that you can do. Sure. Yes. You know, around that, you know, something you can watch or listen to consistently that's going to lead to conversation. And I think the most important thing you could possibly do for your sex life is start praying about your sex life. Yeah. Like 
and, and we have people who are like, that is the weirdest thing, but <laughs> I'm sure be. you pray for your marriage. I mean, pray for your marital relationship, obviously, but pray for your sex life. God created it. He wants you to have a thriving sex life. Like literally he made it for you and your spouse, right? He made it for a husband and wife to enjoy together. And, and so why would we not pray for one of God's creations? Like he created sex. And so it's not like this thing we can't talk about with God, but I'm saying like, if you feel like there's this something that's holding you back, like pray about it together, but also pray about it separately. And I'm telling you, that's something we've done for years, like for years. And it makes all the difference, you know, and anytime there's been time where I've not prayed specifically about that, I feel like I, I can tell the difference. Like it's supposed to, it, it really is something we should pray for. Yeah. And, um, and so you sh don't feel weird about it. Like this is something again, that God created and wants you to have thriving, a thriving part of your marriage relationship. And so good. Guys, thanks for sticking with us these 14 days. It's been so much fun. And it's been an honor to just have you on this this ride with us as we've had these these discussions about sex. And join us, you know, starting tomorrow. We've got uh, brand new episodes that'll be coming out every Monday and every Wednesday. Yep. And if you're not listening to our Parenting Uncovered podcast, our brand new podcast all about parenting, every Tuesday, there'll be a new episode of that as well. So uh, three days a week, you have uh, yeah. something to talk about. You may want our voice. You may not want to hear our voices <laughs> anymore, but we just, we do this because we love you and we want to help you. And we're learning all these things along the way as well. So thank you all so much for sticking with us for two weeks. We pray many, many blessings over you and your marriage and specifically your sex life. And we hope that you keep on praying and talking about these things and we will see you next time. Bye guys. <laughs>